The hazards one might expect to run into on the Big Bend Saltwater Paddling Trail are tides that can go out far enough to leave you stranded on your campsite, fast moving weather fronts, high winds, no cell phone coverage, and then onshore hazards like ticks, sand spurs, raccoons that can get into your food supplies, snakes, and then you have issues with resupply being far and few between. So stock up on the food and water. I've described some of the hazards that you might um, run into out here and I think that uh, you can prepare yourself with the right gear for a multi-day open water trip. And some of the gear, um, starting over here, I would not leave uh, town without a spray skirt for my kayak. It keeps the water out and keeps you warm and dry. Then a tow system. Um, I like a waist mounted tow system because if I need to be towed, I can hand it off to someone else. So if you have a tired or a sick paddler, they can be towed to shore. Um, I also like a tarp. A tarp is a great piece of gear to get you out of the wind quick on those days when you come off the water and you're cold and miserable feeling. You can get in some quick shelter. It's easy to put up. Another crucial piece of gear is a flare. They make several different kinds. This is um, a parachute flare, so it goes up and lasts a lot longer. I recommend taking a few flares, and hopefully you'll never need one, but if you do, you've got a backup for your backup if you take at least three. Another great piece of gear that you can make with just a couple of carabiners and a short piece of rope is a contact tow. So now you can contact your boat to someone else and help them out, administer to them, get stuff out of their hatches while you're on the water, hands-free. Great piece of gear. Another crucial piece of gear is a chart. A tide chart and a regular navigational chart are crucial pieces of gear. This is a navigational chart and it helps you find your way around into the deep water. Uh, when the tide is out, you're going to need it. Another probably even more important piece of gear is a way to get your water around. Um, if you look in the Big Bend Saltwater Paddling Trail Guide, it will give you um, how much water you should take. But um, one of the great pieces of gear we use is a water bag. Um, you can use water bottles, um, but you do need to prepare to carry a lot of water on this trip. Another piece of gear that I like, it's kind of my everything piece of gear, is what's called a seal suit or a storm cag. It's a a jacket that's hooded that goes over everything so if you're out on the water and you're paddling and it gets cold it goes over you your PFD and where your skirt would go on your boat and it packs down pretty small as you can see here other critical pieces of gear that I wouldn't leave home without would be the appropriate footwear something with a hard sole um, I like something that drains and something that won't come off my foot in surf or in mud. If I'm walking through mud, it doesn't get pulled off my foot. A hat that gives me plenty of protection from the sun, my ears and the back of my neck, as well as my face. Pretty important. And then this interesting piece of gear here is called a bivy bag. It's a Mylar bag that's big enough to fit someone in, and it keeps them out of the wind, gets you warm. Um, a lot of times I'll land on shore, if it's cold, I'll get in it while I make something hot to drink. If you have someone who comes out of their boat and you can't get them back in, you can put this around them while they're in the water and it'll keep them warmer while you try to effect a rescue. So a bivy bag is a really important piece of gear. Other pieces of gear that I wouldn't leave home without would be a medical kit, fairly comprehensive, and I, not just having a medical kit, but knowing how to use it, um, having CPR and first aid under my belt. Also, before I leave shore, the people that I'm paddling with, I want to know if they have any medical concerns and if they have any medication and where it's kept and make sure that they have their medication with them for a multi-day trip. Along with a medical kit, I like to take a repair kit, a repair kit that I can fix my boat as well as my tent with. So I have mastic tape that will stick to anything when it's wet, a sewing kit, duct tape, various other items to repair things in the field in a wilderness setting. A bilge pump to empty your boat if it gets full of water. And then something you need to think about is the size and type of bags that you're going to load all your stuff in. And I like to compartmentalize in a lot of small bags that fit in my boat easier. Long thin bags fit the ends. 
I also like nylon coated bags so they don't stick to each other or to the inside of the boat. Easy to get in and easy to get out. Another thing that I definitely will take with me on these trips is a mosquito net for my head. So long sleeve clothes and a mosquito net keep the bugs away. As much of the Big Bend saltwater paddling trail is on a very gently shelving coastline, the water is not very deep until you go out pretty far. So a lot of this coastline you're going to have to be pretty far offshore and that means really good navigation. Navigation requires tools, GPS with extra batteries, maybe a deck mounted compass but certainly a handheld compass and charts. I strongly recommend that you do your navigational work before you hit the water. While the weather in Florida in the winter is considered balmy and it's definitely the most pleasant time to paddle the trail, you want to consider the temperature can plummet into the 20s a lot of times it's in the 70s, so you want to prepare for just about anything weather-wise. You want to have a weather radio with plenty of spare batteries and consider that hypothermia in Florida is real. Probably the most important piece of gear I take, including my kayak, is my personal flotation device or my PFD. I like a PFD that's got reflective tape and plenty of pockets. So in this pocket I have my radio, in here spare hatch cover, food, compass, over here I have a rubber skull cap to keep me warm if I get out there and it gets cold. I definitely want some way to cut lines so I have a knife on mine. You can also get snips that work to cut lines when you have lines around the water. Entrapment is a real concern so snips or a knife a must. And then on the back a strobe light for nighttime rescue, a bag on the back with a water bladder, and flares. So if I were to come out of my boat and get separated from it, I may be a victim, but I'm not a helpless victim with food, with hydration, with signaling devices, and something to keep me warm. So probably as or more important than my paddle, every time I hit the water, I have my PFD not only with me, but on. It doesn't work unless you wear it. The minimum level of training and or experience to paddle this trail, I would consider to be um, the individual needs to be able to paddle 15 to 20 miles a day in a loaded boat, have the equipment um, to do self rescues, the experience and the equipment to be able to camp comfortably, the clothing to be comfortable, the food, the appropriate food for the trip, as well as not be a liability to the group that you're paddling with. The way to obtain the appropriate skills to kayak out in this venue would be find a local coach, hopefully one associated with the American Canoe Association or the British Canoe Union. They can give you the stuff you need to know to paddle in a place like this. To ensure a safe paddling adventure, make sure everyone in your group has appropriate gear, experience, and skills. Then you can come out here and enjoy wild Florida on your own terms.